This is the Cobalt controller I just finished working on and in this video I'll be showing you the rough layout, what everything does and some gameplay on KSP. Let me first go over what all the controls do. This is the main direction control. It's pitch down, pitch up and then roll left and right or your left and right depending on if you're flying a plane or a rocket. This button is for staging. I'll explain exactly how it works later. Uh, this is used in conjunction with the toggle switches. I'll also explain how that works later. And this throttle, or this joystick, is used to control the throttle, as is written there. Pressing this button will activate the abort action group, and then the other 10 buttons will activate all the other action groups. If you press the buttons, their respective lights light up. Um, these toggle switches can turn SAS, RCS, gears, and lights on and off. Uh, this one swaps between rocket and plane mode, which decides whether left and right here is roll or yaw. This button is for quick loading or F9. This button is for quick saving or F5. Um, this is time warp minus, this is time warp plus, and pressing this gets you to the map. So let me just quickly take this apart to show you what the inside looks like. Anyway, you can see the inside of the controller is very messy. Every single component has an individual wire from every pin to a connection on the board. And then these all connect to the controller itself, which then connects to the computer. I've been trying to think of a better way to do this, but this is the best I can come up with. So I just opened the controller up again to look for a problem, you know, with the multimeter and drill and everything. Turns out the microcontroller was unplugged, so I just plugged it back in and everything worked again. Anyway, I'll just put this back together and start playing some KSP. So I've just finished putting it back together and tested it again. Everything is working. You can see if I move a joystick, the values move on the computer, which means it's able to communicate. So now I'll open up Cobalt Space Program and start playing. So I just started a random sandbox save and this is the default Osprey plane. You can see the pilot is outside the plane. So the first thing you have to do is make the pilot climb back in. He has to climb back up the ladder and into the cockpit. So now we're into the cockpit and I've had the look. The action group to retract the ladder is action group 4. So I'll press the f number 4 button on the controller. You can see the LED turns red. And on the screen, the ladder has started retracting. Now the ladder is fully retracted. What we can do is get the key that arms the staging, put it in and turn. You can see now the LED has turned green, which means that the staging is armed. Now what we have to do is change the controller from rocket mode to plane mode so that it adapts the controls for flying planes. Turn on SAS and press this button for full throttle. Or you can press the big green button to turn on the engines. You can see the plane has started moving, but it's not moving very fast because the brakes are still on. So I'll turn off the brakes and now it's really going. The left joystick controls the yaw, and turning it makes it makes the plane go left and right. The right joystick controls the pitch, and now the plane has lifted off the ground. I will put up the gears so that the wheels retract and the plane is more aerodynamic. And now I can use this joystick to roll and yaw the plane.
I've also had the look. Action group 5 is the action group that turns on the afterburners. So I'll press 5, and the afterburners of the engine turn on. You can see that the speed dramatically increases. We're now at roughly the speed of sound. So now if I turn around and suddenly pitch up, it's amazing that the plane didn't break apart from that. You can see the wings were flexing a lot. Okay, I'll cut throttle and turn a bit to slow down. Okay, that's very aggressive. Lower the gears. And I won't land on the runway, I'll just land on the grass next to it. Now as I'm approaching the land, I slowly pitch up. And maintain a moderate descent rate. And at the end I just pull up a bit on the joystick and the plane touches down. I'll turn on the brakes and now the plane should slow down. So that's how you use the Kerbal controller I just built. I think it was a really fun experience building this controller, not only playing with it, but actually designing and constructing it. So if you have any questions, you can put them down below. I have a GitHub page where I have a 3000 word document explaining all the technical aspects of this controller, and also another document that goes through the process of building it. If you would like to do something similar, I would highly suggest it. I think it was a great experience. Um, again, if you have any questions, just ask me. I would be willing to help anyone. So thanks for watching this video. Goodbye.